All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Sarah Thurber, who is just north of Chicago. How are you doing, Sarah? Great. Nice to see you, John. Yeah, and Sarah's managing partner at Foresight, a speaker, author, thought leader in the field of creativity. And you work with, uh, in partnership with academic researchers, creative, creativity trainers and designers to spearhead the development of online and print-based tools to support creativity. And what we're going to talk about today is four problem-solving styles and how best to understand them and interact with them. And this could be particularly helpful for, for salespeople because uh, sales is all about problem solving. So let's get straight into it, Sarah. Um, let's go through, what are the four problem solving styles? Sure, well, we uh, at Foresight, we are a combination of researchers and practitioners and trainers. And what we've, what we've discovered from our own research and from past research is that Problem solving is, is not one kind of thinking. It requires four really different kinds of thinking to come together so that you can come up with the best possible solution. So the four types of thinking won't surprise you at all because they're thinking that you do, we all do, but we just don't have names for them. So the types of thinking that go into a great solution are first clarifying, understanding the problem. Yep. The second one is ideating coming up with ideas, possibilities. The third is developing, taking those ideas and really trying to figure out which one's the best, how to make the best solution. And then finally, implementation, doing it, just getting it done. Mm -hmm. um, the interesting thing is that, you know, once you understand there are four types of thinking that have to go into problem solving, you think, great, well, then I can do that. That's perfect. Right. But the other piece of research that comes through from Foresight, which is really telling and really influences how successful someone's going to be in collaboration or even in a sale is that we all like some of those types of thinking more than others. So right. that, you know, I may come into a, a problem solving process and I like the ideas part. I'm going to go right mm -hmm. for that. Someone yeah. else might really like the clarifying part and really want to get all the information and all the facts. And I'm going to look at them like, really, we're going to do that. <laughs> It's so dreary. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's funny because um, if uh, it's often if you've ever you know if you're ever in brainstorming sessions or whatever, uh, and you start to go through an idea, there's always somebody who jumps to solution immediately, and there's always somebody, as you said, who goes, "Well, hold up a second, uh, hang on, I need to understand more." So let's let's talk and um, let's start talk a bit about clarity first, because I do think like clarity is almost the 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 foundation of everything. If you can't, if you can't reach, if you can't get some level of clarity, everything else that follows from that is, could potentially go anyway. Yeah, it's guesswork, absolutely. I mean, you think when you walk into a shop, somebody says, how can I help you? Or they mm -hmm. say, what brings you here? You know, those yeah. are clarifying questions. Those are just their way of absolutely narrowing the funnel so they start to point you in the right direction. I mean, you know, when you think of your best sales experiences, when somebody has really been a great salesperson for you, you know, as a buyer, you're trying to solve a problem, right? You're trying yeah. to buy a house or a, a car or a widget, and there are lots of options. So it's, it's a complicated problem you're trying to solve. And when someone helps you get clarity on it, like that's a beautiful thing. When they say, okay, so you're, you know, what was your last car like? What did you like about it? Mm -hmm. but, and, and what are you trying to change about it now? All of those are clarifying questions to help the buyer understand what they're looking for, but also really to help the seller understand what they need to sell. Yeah, and it's interesting because, uh, you know, as people and researchers said, you know, there's so much information out there and buyers are so much better informed and ever. Um, and, that, and that's true to a degree, but they're also overwhelmed because there is so much information. And as you said, because there are so many choices. So while they may think they know what they want, as you said, the value that you can bring to the equation is helping them actually develop clarity around what they actually want. No doubt, John, that is such a good point. There's research and it's not our research, but about 
uh, sort of selection overwhelm. I think there was a, mm -hmm. a study with jam and you know, you see three types of jam and you go in, it's easy for people to select, but when you see 20 types of jam, yeah. people get shut down. They don't end up making a purchase. It's too overwhelming. And we are, we are all looking at 20 types of jam, you know, every, mm -hmm. every time we make a decision and it's, it's really hard. Yeah, and that's where the uh, and that's where the value of the salesperson is actually can increase as opposed to decrease. Uh, and I agree 100% with you. I mean, it's true. You see three jams, no problem. You see 20 jams, you're just like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. This is too much. You're in a jam. Um, <laughs> yeah, you are. You are literally, literally in a jam. <laughs> um, so that's so. So clarity is incredibly uh, important. And sometimes then uh, the next thing is people go from, okay, so we've established kind of what you need and all of that. So you immediately go to solution as opposed to, as you said, ideation, where it's more of a creative process as opposed to jumping straight to, oh, here's what you need. You are so right. And, and honestly, this is where's, what's cool about working with Foresight because Foresight mm -hmm. has an assessment and we measure using the Foresight thinking profile. We measure your preference for each of these types of thinking. And what we know about salespeople, you know, we have, we have sort of research for every category of job. And what we know about salespeople is they love the implementation stage. So mm -hmm. they want to enter in a situation and make a direct path to the close. Like that yeah. to them is a great problem solving experience. Mm -hmm. But 75% of people do not have that preference. We do not share that preference. So when somebody comes at you and tries to make a sale by just bulldozing over the rest of the process, you know, there's a really high chance your feeling about that is bad. <laughs> you know, mm. you're feeling, you're feeling unheard and, and it's not helping you make a decision. It's clearly a decision someone else wants you to make, but it isn't your, isn't coming from you. So explain a little bit about ideation for people who maybe aren't, from, aren't as familiar with that word or the concept. Sure. Um, so ideation, the next phase of the process in creative problem solving is the thing that allows you to get an original idea, a sort of unique idea. And there are maybe about 11% of people who have a high preference for that part of the process. They are big idea people. They like the big, pe the big picture. So if, you know, they're looking to buy a car, they're often looking for aesthetics. They're often looking mm -hmm. for something unique about the car, something special, something, you know, that's original about that particular make or model or a particular car, they like a story about it, they are not going to be dying to get the, the spec sheet, you know, right. they'll, they'll get that, but that's not the first thing that's going to get them interested in, in the purchase. So they're, yeah. they're big idea people and they like big ideas and stories and vision. Yeah, so for them, I mean, if we go back to the car analogy to them, it's as much about the experience and the aesthetics and the emotion and the feeling around it. Right. This car, you know, this car was designed by the greatest, you know, auto driver in the world. Really? You know, that's, yeah. that's super exciting. That makes that car such a unique, personal, special thing. Whereas really there are people who just could care less about that. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. Not what gets them excited. Yeah. So, so when you're in this situation, if you're with somebody who is like this, then, um, you know, part of the, the sales process here is to help them to create this big picture, to get this emotional connection with, with whatever um, product or service you're selling. Um, so this is, as opposed to moving quickly on, as you said, to the developing or implementation phase, this is the one where you have to create the emotional connection. It is, and it's where their their imagination lights up about what mm -hmm. this product or service could be for them. You know, they see the vision of it. They will move heaven and earth to to get yeah. it. Then, and really, honestly, they'll jump right right to the end often uh, once that's happened for them. Right. Right. And I guess that's the, that's the other, the other part is sometimes these are, it's enough for somebody like, if, as you say, if somebody is like this, it's enough for them. Once they get that big picture, once they get that feeling, they're like, okay, I'm sold. I'm done. Let's, let's move on. Whereas they tend, be, they tend to be kind of passionate folks, as you say. So like once they do it, they're much more uh, intuitive problem solvers mm -hmm. than analytical. So mm -hmm. like you say, once that switch has been flipped, they tend to be good to go. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about developing. That's always the hard one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, 
it's actually, it's the hard one probably to describe and it's a very hard one to sell to because mm -hmm. developing like clarifying is an analytical mindset. It mm -hmm. is trying to understand the best solution. So clarifiers want to know all the information. They want to know how this, you know, um, the history of this, like how we know it's true. If you're making these claims, what the research is, they want to know that the product is solving the right problem. Developers want to know that it's the right solution. That's, that's kind of a subtle distinction, mm -hmm. but an important one. So the thing that really helps developers make a good decision, what they feel is a good decision is having choices, like a couple of good choices and comparing mm -hmm. them and understanding really in minutia, what makes the choice I'm getting better than the one, the, the 20 other jars of jam, you know? Right. So they really like the, the details and the, the information. So in a situation like that, then you obviously have to be prepared to answer a lot of questions. Um, you have to be well equipped with your own differentiators. Uh, you know, what is your, what is your core, uh, what is your core selling proposition here? What's different to the others? And you have to be prepared to, I mean, this can be quite a frustrating process for, for a salesperson, right? So, but you have to be prepared to go through it. You, you, you know what? It's the, let go piece where mm -hmm. you have to give them here are the other contenders here are the other things you could be buying you may not want to buy mine and in some ways your willingness to let it go uh increases their willingness to come to your uh product because they believe you you know if you're mm -hmm. if you're that confident that here are the three options really on the market this one's ours these are the differentiators this is why i think it'd be a great fit given what we've just clarified and you know, the ideas we've just made. Um, but you choose, you know, you really take a look. Clarifiers love that and they also need some time. That's a really mm -hmm. different thing. Like ideators, once they get it, they can, they can move. Implementers have, have bought it yesterday. It'd be better if it was already checked off. But, right. but developers really want the time to mull it over. And that's a hard thing to put into the sales process. No, no, it, it is. And it requires it requires a fine balance between patience and also uh, continuing to have a little urgency in it. Because, I mean, obviously, people like the, the, like the, the who are who are oriented in this way. These are the people who often turn into the no decision because they want to go too far and they want to compare too much. And they're too and they're too reluctant to make the to make a final decision. You are really right about that. And so they do need help. They need help making decision and they will be really grateful if you help them make the best decision, you know, mm -hmm. not just if you help them make a decision, but if you really help them believe they've made the best decision. And part of that is they're perfectionists. So they want it to be, you know, fitting into the part of what makes it a best decision for them is that it fits into all the other things they need to solve. It's not just a, a one and done. It fits into the ecosystem that they're living in. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, they, they struggle with closure. And, yeah. and you'll and, help and, them if you help them with that. Yeah. And I was going to say, and, and part of what you need to do is help them get to that finish line, help them make that decision. And, and sometimes that means, you know, helping them understand that maybe some of the things that they think are important aren't that important or can come later, but it, it, but it requires a little bit of elegance in how you do that. You know, there, I'll tell you a story, a personal story of mm -hmm. uh, my dad, who, whose profile was uh, a clarifier and developer, exactly the opposite of mine. And uh, he was a lawyer and he would, he was an estate planner. So he would understand what people had and he would develop the perfect plan for them. You know, when they died, this would go here and that would go there yeah. and it was all legal and optimized for taxes, et cetera. So he was a really great thinker that way. But when he got older, he couldn't make decisions. Uh, he, he couldn't look at a legal document and, and get through it. But when my sister and I uh, were trying to help him with his estate, with his own estate, she wanted him to sign a document. And she said, she called me finally and said, Sarah, I can't get dad to sign this document. <laughs> and I said, well, what's going on? She's like, I go there. I say, dad, this is the document you wanted. It's great. Can you please sign it? And he says, oh, babe, you know, like, mm, what? I need a little more time. And he won't mm -hmm. sign it. 
And I said, well, and I thought, okay, dad is a clarifier and a developer. I said, okay, here's what he needs. He can no longer read it. So he doesn't feel like he's able to get the information that he needs. So he's yeah. not feeling like he can make a good decision. So you need to read the document, understand the information, walk him through the information, answer any questions he has about the information, and then say, dad, I'm going to be back in three days. And here are the options that I think we have. You know, you can sign it, you can revise it and sign it, or we can say, we're not going to sign it, but I'll check with you on Thursday and, you know, call me if you have any questions in the meantime. She called me Thursday afternoon. She said, he signed it. I can't <laughs> believe it. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, because you gave him the experience he needed yeah. to feel like he made a good decision. Um, yeah. And, and I think that's, and I think you just to underline a key point that you, that you raised there. And that is that you have to adapt to the, you know, the buyer's style, not your style, not how you do things, but how they want to do things. And yes, you know, in, in that scenario too, you did actually set a time frame for things. You didn't let things be op things. Oh, you didn't leave things open ended. It wasn't like a, it, it wasn't all up in the air but it adapted to your father's style. It did. And honestly, it wasn't manipulative. I, I really mm -hmm. resent when I feel manipulated by sure. sales. Like I, nobody wants that, but it was honoring the fact that he needed to make a decision in the way he needed to make a decision. Mm -hmm. And, and she set him up. She, she kept trying to just force the decision. She's got a lot of implementer in her and yeah. you know, he, he did not respond well to that. He didn't, cave to that because he didn't have an implementer he didn't match her implementer energy <laughs> he didn't ever need to sign that document from his perspective you know so uh, and and moving on and moving on to the to the implementer style yeah that's a big one for sales i'll tell you yeah so so when the in the implementer style as you said these are the people who who want the solution yesterday who want to f go far you know are so fired up who just want to get this done want to get it in so how do you i mean that sounds like wow that's a dream right okay that's the easiest person to sell to but it's not quite that simple is it well it you know it's interesting because there's research that shows who likes to work with who like which problem solving mm -hmm. styles really like to work with who so clarifiers like to work with other clarifiers and developers mm -hmm. like to work with other developers and they, they can tolerate clarifiers and implementers. They just like to work with implementers. There are a lot of implementers in business, people who are just getting things done. Mm -hmm. um, and, and often they are, you know, simpatico. They, they get it like, Hey, I need a car. Here's a car. Great. Is it the best car? Yeah. Okay, great. You know, you can move those people uh, through to a decision quickly, but you want to be sure they've gone through the process so they don't get buyer's remorse later. Yeah. You know, there's a tendency to make a decision in order to get it done and off the plate. And people can regret that. You know, people can weeks later think, I guess I didn't really clarify enough. I guess I didn't really look at the options or weigh the, weigh the choices. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as a salesperson, ironically, your job is to slow those folks down yeah. and to make sure from their perspective that they're solving the right problem and that they've, you know, they have a vision of how this is going to fit and they've weighed the options and indeed that you can, you can pave the way to this implementation fast. Yeah, because uh, it, it, exactly. I mean, I couldn't agree more because I mean, the thing is, um, so it's great it's great that they want to move fast and it's great that you can probably close the deal really fast. And it seems like, wow, that, that was simple. Didn't require a lot of time or effort and we're, we're great. However, as you said, because maybe the lack of investigation, the, the lack of clarity during this process, it can mean that post sales then becomes a nightmare. Now they become a huge headache. Exactly. I mean, if you want people to recommend you as a salesperson to their friends, you know, it's easy. Your job is to help them work through the creative problem solving process. It's to make sure mm -hmm. they got what they needed out of the clarify stage and the ideate stage and the development stage and, and the implement stage and implement tends to be easy, but as you say, it can be too easy. You know, you don't, yeah. it can be deceptively easy when you've got a couple of implementers in the room. 
Yeah, because you don't want to be post sale, you don't want to be going through the clarifying and, and the ideation and all of that, because suddenly it's very resource inten intensive, the buyer is not happy because they thought they were getting something else because you never went through the that process. So yeah, you can see there's a huge amount of benefit to backing them up a little bit and saying, okay, that's gr great that you're that enthusiastic, but let's just make sure this is exactly what you're looking for. That is right, because you know what, it's, it's into the sale that everything is in a system and once it's done everything has to be bespoke you know everything yeah. has to be like oh all right well let's rewind mm -hmm. and that's that's not a win for anybody i mean interestingly implementers by nature will go into a problem solving process by trying to start by doing something first mm -hmm. and yeah. when that doesn't work they'll go to clarify so you know, they are their own worst enemy with buying because they'll go, they'll buy it, and they'll be like, God, this does not work. And yeah, then yeah, they'll yeah. go like, what was I, why did I post the pain point? What was I trying to solve, <laughs> you know, by buying this thing? So you want to make sure they've done their homework, and, and you can do that as long yeah. as you know what you're doing. Yeah, because otherwise the, the tendency is they say, oh, that product's no good. Right. When the or reality is that product was that, no good. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. When, when in, in fact, you know, the, the, the product may be absolutely fantastic, but maybe doesn't suit them because they didn't go through a proper clarifying process. It's so true. It's really yeah. true. Well, listen, thank you, um, Sarah. This has been fantastic. I think great insights for people there. Um, absolutely uh, encourage you to go check out uh, Foresight. Um, all of Sarah's information and the Foresight information will be available below this video. But before we go, Sarah, please do tell people a little bit more about the work you do. Sure. Um, and, and thanks, John. This has been so much fun to talk about. Sales is not really the primary thing we do. Primarily, mm -hmm. we teach teams creative problem solving so they can be better teams and get to better solutions. So this is a really good collaborative problem solving tool. But of course, if sales is a collaborative process, it's perfect for sales. So yeah. it's really fun for me to um, share this research and share what we've learned and what we teach with, uh, with you. It's been great. Great. All right. Thank you, Sarah. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. I will see you all again soon. Thank you. Yeah.